Hey, my name is Robert Indres, and I want to tell you about our recent work. A critical like collective state leads to long range cell communication in dictostelium discretium aggregation. So, there's currently a lot of interest in quantitative biology to understand the collective behavior of biological systems, ranging from cells to bird flocks to fish schools and even human crowds. A typical example of collective behavior is the starvation induced aggregation of dictostelium amoeba. During the normal vegetative cycle, these amoeba feed on bacteria. However, when they are starved, they secrete cyclic AMP, a chemoattractant, in chemotax or move towards it from these streams, ultimately a slug, which moves around, and it forms stark and spore cells, and these spores disperse and allow the amoeba to survive. Also, it's a very well characterized system. We ask two main questions. How do we describe the transition from single cells to multiple cells in the early aggregate here? And second, when exactly is this transition? And how do cells manage to communicate over macroscopic distances roughly one millimeter in size? There are two main ways to achieve aggregation. It could be hierarchical how it's done in an embryo. For instance, if there are external maternal factors which tell the embryo how to polarize, where to form the head and tail and how to form the body parts. Or it could be self-assembled if the small molecules or constituent cells have local properties, which tells them how to order themselves. Or in terms of cells, there could be a leader cell telling other cells what to do, or it could be self-organized if the cells communicate with their neighbors. In both cases, we produce order. How to differentiate the two? We could apply a perturbation and only when the leader cell is affected, the other cells would be affected as well. Or more simply, we look at the fluctuations around the average cell behavior. So if they only care about the leader, the fluctuations between cells would be independent, just wobbling around. However, when they talk to their neighbors, when there is local communication, you would expect that the fluctuations are also correlated. To the test these ideas of self-organization and criticality, we extended a previously established minor type model for cell shape and chemotaxis to include internal cyclic AMP production and degradation, and also cyclic AMP secretion and external degradation of cyclic AMP. So these cells from these detailed simulations have to fulfill certain properties. So first, cells should stream. That means following their neighbors. We do this with a single cell in a rectangular box with periodic boundary conditions. So this cell secretes cyclic AMP from the rear and it breaks symmetry by following its own tail. Sometimes it goes up, but after a while it goes left or right again. Second, these cells should be able to solve the back of the wave problem. That means if there's an incoming cyclic AMP wave, then they should move towards it and pulse. But once this, the wave has passed, they shouldn't go back and follow it. Third, while we can't do large simulations of these detailed simulations, even a small clump of cells should show a tendency to aggregate. And this is shown here in panel D by the pair correlation functions, which shows these peaks. However, to study hundreds and thousands of cells, we have to simplify the model, and this is done by coarse graining. So we take information from the detailed simulations, like the gradient profile of the secreted cyclic AMP, and feed it in these simpler simulations. And indeed, these coarse grain simulations lead to aggregation. So when cells are excited, they pulse cyclic AMP, shown in yellow, they form these streams, and ultimately aggregate. The interesting thing is, when we look at the spatial information, the order in the images as a function of time, we see a sharp rise at the onset of aggregation. This is reminiscent of the two-dimensional icing model. At a critical temperature or coupling strength, there is a second-order phase transition where the spins align spontaneously. And in that case, also there is a sharp rise in the spatial information. Hence, we wondered, can we describe aggregation by a critical-like state? As a correlation length, the communication between entities diverges at a critical point. This could explain the long-range cell communication. To test these ideas of self-organization and criticality, we took our coarse grain simulations and we looked at the non-connected correlations between the direction of cell movement. And we see in panel B that the directions are highly correlated at the onset of aggregation, that the correlation length is much larger than the typical cell length. This indicates order. However, to study the idea of self-organization, we look at the fluctuations in the direction, if they are correlated, indicating that they communicate with their neighbors. And again, even for the connected correlations, we see an increase at the onset of aggregation, much larger than the typical cell, cell distance. 
These correlations for different cell numbers collapse upon normalization. The self-similarity is typical for a critical-like system. However, a critical system is in the thermodynamic limit of an infinite numbers of cells. However, here we have a finite system. How do we study critical-like behavior? One idea is to do finite size scaling to increase the system size and see if it moves more and more to the thermodynamic limit. For that purpose, we look at the correlation length as a function of system size, where L is the size of the whole box. When we look at small parts of the box and increase it, the correlation length increases with the size of the box. There is no saturation, indicating that the correlation length is equal to the system size. That correlation length increases the more cells we have. This is a sign of a critical-like system. To test these predictions from the simulations, we obtained data from the Thomas Gregor lab at Princeton University. The cells are visualized by the internal cyclic AMP, imaged by FRED, on a large field of cells. We apply the same analysis methods to the data as we apply to the simulations. Also here again, we see a sharp rise in the non-connected correlations indicating order, as visible by eye. We also applied the connected correlations and see again increased during the streaming phase. And similar to the simulations, we see a sharp rise in the spatial information, the ordering of these images. Furthermore, the correlations collapse onto each other for experiments with different numbers of cells. Second, the correlation length increases the system size, indicating there is no saturation and that the correlation length is equal to the system size, supporting the idea of a critical-like behavior in this finite system. In the supplementary information, we also provide other evidence for critical-like behavior. For instance, we look at cluster sizes of similar cell behavior, and we see that these cluster sizes have roughly a power law distribution at the critical state in the images. We also see evidence for critical slowing down that right before aggregation, there are different aggregation centers bubbling up, competing with one another, and the sluggish behavior is typical for a critical-like state. However, criticality means that there are parameters which are fine-tuned to the critical point. However, in simulations, it's not particularly hard to get aggregation as soon as there is some attraction between cells by the secreted cyclic AMP. So what's special about the critical state? So in simulations, we, what we did is we changed certain parameters and compared the aggregation to wild-type cells. And what we found is that wild-type cells have the longest correlation lengths and the largest spatial information to compare to other to all the other perturbed cells. We also looked at literature data. Again, the wild-type cells is the best in performance. Hence, by fine-tuning to the critical state, dictostelium aggregation might be optimized, leading to the optimal dispersal of spores and survival. So in conclusion, we showed that exceptional long-range cell-cell communication is achieved by a critical-like state known from phase transitions in physical systems. We established a multi-scale model covering single cells and reaching out to thousands of cells. We looked at the non-connected correlations and we found evidence for self-organization. We looked at the connected correlations and found evidence for critical-like behavior in this finite system. We verified our predictions from the simulations by applying the exactly same analysis algorithms to time-lapse microscopy data from the Thomas Gregor lab. While aggregation is very easy to achieve, a critical-like state, a fine-tuned state, optimizes the behavior in terms of correlation lengths in spatial information. Yeah.